Tonight on Join News Prime, as the world gets ready to enter the new year, we are live with our correspondents across the country to find out how people are wrapping up 2020. Government Free Water Initiative comes to an end today. We ask what impact the initiative has had on those who benefited. Or my family cannot carry their bucket and then come and fetch where the water is. So I think they're supposed to do it where it will benefit from everybody. Yeah, yeah, you feel it, yeah, you enjoy it more. 39 years after the 31st December coup d'etat that ushered in the PNDC, former President John Mahama is asking for a renewed commitment to uphold the principles of probity and accountability in memory of the late President J.J. Rawls. It's now is the time for us to remain committed and united to the cause of our party. In business, Trade Expert calls for more support for private sector businesses as Africa Continental Free Trade Kickstart on 1st of January 2021. For the private sector to be able to, you know, be ready, it will depend on the, the policies and then the enabling the environment that have been put in place by government. My name is Israel Lai. Join News Prime is coming to you live from our final fast studios at Coco Mili here and Accra on your digital terrestrial TV because we're free to air and also on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. This is the home of independent, fearless, credible and impactful journalism. Stay tuned in. <laughs> Ghanaians will no longer, from today, no longer enjoy the free water services following President Kufo's directive to the Ghana Water Company. The social intervention initiative was to cushion the public against the impact of COVID-19. As this intervention comes to an end, some citizens in the capital, Accra, have been reacting. Join us this Annabella Ohene Jang has, been, has more on this. Government will absorb the water bills for all Ghanaians for the next three months i.e. April, May, and June. All water tankers, publicly and privately owned, are also going to be mobilized to ensure the supply of water to all vulnerable communities. President Akufuado announcing that government will absorb water bills for Ghanaians from May to June 2020. It was part of COVID-19 relief for the people. The intervention was then extended until 31st December 2020. As the program comes to an end, the responses from water consumers have been varied here in the capital. I wish it would stay because it has helped a lot of us a lot. Like washing crap, I didn't, I didn't go to, like go out and go and pay for it and then fetch the water. I just fetched it free and I'm using it and then everything is cool. So I think it's supposed to stay. Yeah, they don't have to cut it out. We beg them. Papa, were there days where you had challenges with the, I mean, the flow of the water? Yes. Yeah, yeah, there were days. Like Friday evening, then it will stop coming, and then maybe Monday or Sunday evening, then it will, it will start coming again. Afraid of help? It's no help. It's not here. Right now, see it right now. You just, you just want it right now. Is it happening all right? See. It's not coming right now. So we're in the city. You ain't no Osu? Huh. Yes, Osu, right? I have to take my bag to fresh water in the Osu Ari. It has helped us in so many ways. Personally, I'm able to bathe with two or three buckets of water now. The free water policy has helped us a lot, especially we the aged. The government has done well, but I was hoping they would end it after the new year. My house is far from where the free pipe is, so normally I don't benefit from because I can't carry my bucket or my family cannot carry their bucket and then come and fetch where the water is. So I think they're supposed to do it where it will benefit from everybody. Yeah, yeah, free in there, yeah, enjoy it more. Enjoy it, be cry. I didn't enjoy the free water at all. 
I still buy water because the owner said she feared she will pay when the free water policy ends. At first, I'll be fetching it at a Sunday. But there is the, the free water is just behind my house, so if I cross the road, I can fetch it and then come and do what I want to do with it. Well, while others say they didn't benefit from the free water policy, those who enjoyed this policy hope it stays a bit longer despite government's decision to end it. The multi-million dollar question is whether or not this is sustainable in the long term should it be extended any further, especially when the Ghana Water Company has complained for years about the huge cost of processing water given activate of illegal small-scale miners. Annabella Ohenijan reports for Joy News. Well, it's day number 366, the last year of 2020. By midnight, the world will be ushered into a new year here in Ghana. Churches and many others are preparing for many religious activities and other celebrations to usher in the new year. Joy News has been out on the streets of Accra to find out what some people have been up to. Here's a report by Sarah Mensah. Inside the Perez Chapel International here in Accra, church workers are hard at work preparing for the night. This hall seats over 4,000 people and it is expected to be filled to capacity for the church's last service of the year. As you can see, um, the seats are spaced um, to meet the COVID-19 protocols. We have other protocols in place. So to ensure that people wash their hands when they are coming in, we have Veronica buckets stationed at all the various entry points. People have not been to church um, for some people since the COVID started. This is an opportunity to, to end the year in the presence of God. Um, we also have our virtual services, so those who are not able to make it um, can also watch from home, but I'm sure um, people would come, there will be a huge turnout um, because people would want to enter the, the new year um, in the presence of God. As I said, there's still the virtual option for those who um, still feel um, they are aged and want to watch from home or feel that um, they, don't, they, they still don't want to come into the service and would want to have the same atmosphere in their homes. We also have an overflow for people who feel they may not be comfortable in here um, and because we have spaced the seats as well, um, the capacity you can have in the auditorium is reduced. So we have an overflow outside with screens um, and spacing for people who want to also be, who would come but will not have the opportunity to be in the, in the auditorium. Already many of the congregants are booking their seats by leaving, the ba by leaving their Bibles and bags on available spaces some people go to work and they come late so they call some of the ushers and tell them they should reserve a seat for them but tonight what i'm looking around i mean it could be people who come early so once they reserve the seat and people do not come early we may remove the things so that people will sit so that there will not be a space whilst people are sitting you could see that there is a spacing between the people so we don't want those need to happen. So by we will start our service at eight o'clock. So maybe by seven thirty, and the person wasn't in, then we will take the thing off and people. Elsewhere at the pedestrians' market at Circle in Accra, scores of people are busy buying and selling. Here, there are those who would be spending the last night of the year out of the church, like twenty-eight-year-old Kwabina Buache. At first, I Twenty twenty has been a difficult year for many, with the world dealing with a pandemic never seen before in decades. Many Ghanaians are looking forward to a relatively better and hopefully prosperous twenty twenty one. Sarah Mensens reports for Joy News. So how is the rest of Ghana readying itself for the end of the new year? We're joined by Zoom, by correspondents. First, we have Rafiq Salam uh, joining us from the Upper West Region. Wow. Hello, Rafiq. Uh, 
how is the preparations for the new year going? Yes, Rafi. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Preparations for the new year in the Upper West region, uh, I can tell you, is quite in advance uh, stage uh, because many people are preparing uh, to go to the pub, some want to go to the church, and others are saying that they will be outdoors, they won't be in any of these places, but they will like to uh, stay vigil uh, till the next morning. And so, uh, as I speak to you now, preparations are ongoing. Uh, people already have washed their cars, and also uh, the saloons uh, were also uh, full to the brim, and for them to go to the churches and also uh, go to the pubs to observe this particular day. All right, is there a very special way that people of Wa welcome the New Year? Um, uh, usually it used to be uh, converging at the pubs and also at the restaurants. Uh, it used to be at the Upland Hotel, which is what was for the middle class, but uh, I'm told that at that uh, uh, occasion is not coming on, but there are other places like uh, the Cage Lodge where people will converge, and also a place like uh, the, the guys where people will also uh, converge. And also, you go to the churches, you go, uh, it will be full uh, to the brim, and so many people would like to uh, uh, witness the crossover uh, in these places. But the only disappointing thing for the people of the Apple region, especially people who want to uh, drink alcohol, especially club beer, uh, I'm also told that Palm Wine is also not in town. So they are going to have a, somehow a dry crossover in the Apple region. All right, Rafi, just to confirm, so we have two commodities that are in short supply. You said club beer and palm wine. Yes, they are not in town. And uh, if you uh, go to town this evening around 4 or 5, if you see the queues, uh, that were there. Several people wanted palm wine. As well. But you see, it's also uh, good for the local industry, talking about the pito, uh, because most of the pito bars uh, were also uh, filled to the brim because uh, people, uh, because the club beer and other uh, commodities are not there, so they are resorting to the use of the local pito, and they are also cashing in on them. All right, so the lack of club beer and palm wine has brought uh, pito to the fore, so pito is enjoying all the glory. It's going to enjoy all the glory because uh, people are saying that it's even far better because that's where you can get all the local natural ingredients, uh, which uh, they have shifted to the foreign ones, but they are thinking that now they are back home. All right, thank you very much, uh, Rafik Salam. And we're moving to Kumasi, the Shanti regional capital, where Rastos Tsaradonko is on standby. Rastos, is there a special way people in Kumasi are showing the new year? Uh, you know that the people of Kumasi are very religious, and so they do not take their Christianity for granted. And a lot of them, when you speak to them on the street, they think uh, that um, if you do not go to church on the 31st, then uh, you are closer to the devil himself. <laughs> and so on a night like this, on the 31st, getting into the new year, uh, every person you see on the street is heading towards at least uh, to participate 10 minutes of church activity and to uh, usher in the new year before they go back to uh, the streets to enjoy themselves. And so if you look at the streets right now, lots of traffic um, across the streets. This particular one is Bomso as you see a number of petrol vehicles that at this moment you wouldn't find are on the streets moving to and fro uh, because people are heading towards the various churches uh, to uh, a climax at the year. Here at Love FM, where I'm standing now, behind me is the Maxima area. It looks a bit silent, but uh, in front of me, quite loudly uh, in the area, we have the Miracle Manor Church, uh, which is hosting a, a, a church service in front of our premises this evening. Quite a number of chairs have been arranged. People are trooping in to sit down uh, to climax the year right here in our premises, Love and in Shire from Israel. All right, so we can see the live visuals, uh, as you indicated, of uh, that chair service that's going to take place. Uh, from what you see, are we likely to have uh, social distancing protocols being practiced there? Well, they've arranged the chairs in this manner, but there are ushers uh, who are uh, to ensure that people do not sit in some of the middle seats and all that to ensure that we have social distancing. And it's also a mask uh, compulsory service, and so... Ushers are in there to ensure that people who are coming in are wearing masks and those who do not have are given some 
uh, to ensure that they uh, conform with the COVID uh, protocols. But Israel, I must also say uh, that there are people who are not going to church. Um, the, the Bantaman High Street, for example, is agog or the usual uh, music for people who want to take a beer and sit uh, down there. There are people who are buying lots of firecrackers, and so they want to be outdoors uh, to fire them when it's 12 midnight uh, and we are crossing over into the new year. So uh, a, a number of people who are going to the various uh, clubs, the, especially the open door uh, bars, uh, to receive the new year as we are starting this evening, Israel. All right, Arasto, so in the Upper West region, we have from Rafiq who's saying that there's a shortage of uh, some uh, beverages. Uh, there's a shortage of beer, club beer to be precise. And then there's palm wine shortage. Do you have any similar experience in, in Kumasi? Well, in Kumasi, there is always beer. And so um, I, we have not gotten that uh, shortage here in the Shanta region. Uh, lots of beer to drink. Uh, I passed by some of the uh, popular spots, Amakum. Uh, you have Bantama, Asafo, uh, and these environs. You have Ahonjo, where the popular spots are. Asupa, where we have the mall, and a number of uh, open air uh, uh, bars uh, available. There's stock drinks, chilled drinks uh, for people to enjoy. But what you find is that people do not normally uh, take to the drinking spot in their numbers as they used to on 31st night. They go to church, and after the church, tomorrow is the time that they sit down to consume all the beer you can find in the fridges across at the length and breadth of Kumasi. All right, thank you very much, Erasto Cesario Donko, bringing us that update from Kumasi. We move now to Ivy Setoji uh, from the Volta region. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Ivy, and how's, uh, how are the preparations shaping up for the ushering in of the new year? All right, it appears uh, we're having some challenges uh, with uh, Ivy. But we will be doing this uh, with the rest of our correspondents. We'll be going to the other correspondents. We'll be going to uh, Cape Coast as well in a bit. But right now, uh, to other stories. The National Peace Ambassador at the Office of the National Chief Imam has been meeting with Asante Hene at the Mishap Palace on instilling post-election peace. In a private chat, Tutunfo told Clemens Chato, peace is best promoted when there is food on the table, good health and development. Prince Apia reports. The peace ambassador spoke to the media after a Ketsi call on the Santehene at the Mesha Palace in Kumase. Our definition of peace and Otunfo's definition of peace uh, matches so well. Otunfo talked about peace being construction of good roads, peace, good education, peace being food on the table for us to eat, peace being good health care. Peace being everything that makes us human. So if government and its um, uh, allies are able to provide all these facilities or amenities uh, for the use of the citizenry, I think there wouldn't be any cause for violence in our country. So I think peace encompasses everything as human for good living. Clemens Jato says, as the NDC gets set to go to court over the 2020 elections verdict, the youth must take learning from the court proceedings and restrain themselves from any political upheavals. As they say always, we are the future. The youth is the future. Um, still, we need to learn from the old. They never resolved any dispute by fighting. The result dispute by dialogue, uh, with dialogue, uh, with consultation. I think uh, if we are supposed to learn from them, uh, the honors lies on us to just uh, follow due process for peace. The National Peace Ambassador pledges commitment to peace by liaising with the Ghana Education Service to establish peace clubs in schools. Our plan is to liaise with government agencies, especially the Ministry of Education and Civic Education, to open peace clubs in all schools. And also a uh, reintroduction of civic education for boys and girls. Uh, 
just trying to hammer on the basic core values of uh, respect for elders, respect for rule of law, and then respect uh, being patriotic uh, for the good of Ghana. Now, the five new cases of coronavirus recently recorded in the Upper West region is being blamed on the residents' disregard for their safety and preventive protocols. Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Afiz Bin Sali has been addressing staff of the National Disaster Management Organization, many of whom were not wearing nose masks and disregarded the other protocols. And he expressed worry about the behavior of the staff and the people of the region. The Upper West region recorded five new cases of coronavirus. Join us as Upper West correspondent Rafiq Salam report from where. Entering here, I was really, really an exceedingly disappointed Upper West Regional Minister at Moni's party staff of National Disaster Management Organization, NADMU, who flouts COVID-19 safety protocols. In the letter inviting me to this gathering, the regional director indicated that all COVID-19 safety protocols would be observed. But to my greatest surprise, majority of the people gathered in here are not observing the safety protocols, and that is worrying to me. Out of the over 100 people invited for the annual get-together, including MPP party communicators, less than 10 persons were on nose marks. They sat closely knitted together, drink, sing and dance in abandoned cheek by jaw. After recording zero cases for the past four months, the region now has five new cases, though the condition of the patients have been described as mild and are isolated at homes. The issue of COVID-19 is still with us. Let us approach it with all the seriousness that it deserves. As a people, it is our conduct, it is our behavior that will enable us to drive the pandemic out of our country and indeed the entire world. Dr. Binsali posited that the current surge in new cases in the region is as a result of the people carelessly throwing the safety protocols to the door. Because of our negligence, we are beginning to register active cases in the Upper West region. The Upper West region's coordinator of NADMO, Mustafa Ahmed, on his part, praised the staff for putting up their best despite the challenges encountered. One other significant thing to note was the recruitment of 50 new staff by the government who were posted to the region. However, they still have this age-old burden of the bush they are still battling with. We are still battling with the almighty one municipal where they are distributing the burn bush and distributing. So going into the year 2021, uh, I don't doubt what you can do. You will have to assess us as you have been doing to make sure we do what is right. Because burning of bush has several diverse effects in our communities. It dries up the water bodies that probably animals could easily go on to drink water. Again, great animals, people are into animal farming. It becomes difficult for the animals to get feed. So burning of bush should be a shared responsibility for every one of us sitting here to make sure we are ambassadors so far as bush buyers are concerned. Reporting for J News, Rafik Salam. Former yeah. President John Mahama has called on members of the NDC and comrades of the 1981 revolution to uphold the principles of the rebellion in honor of the memory of the late former President Jerry John Rawlings. The former president said this at the 39th commemoration of the revolution that ushered in the Fourth Republic. Also at the ceremony was former member of parliament for the Keta constituency, Dan Abudakpi, who expressed worry about what he described as the militarization of the country's democracy and the danger it poses to the stability of the country. Latif Idris was at the ceremony and has come through with the following report.
This is the Osikan Park in the heart of the national capital of Accra and moments ago this background was packed with activity. We had the NDC's national executives, the flag bearer of the party for the just ended 2020 presidential elections and many others addressing the party faithful here at the Osikan Park. Former President John Romani Mahama called on the rank and file of the party to now more than ever uphold the principle of probity and accountability. Comrades, now is the time for us to remain committed and united to the cause of our party. And the question that we should ask ourselves at this 39th anniversary of the revolution is how do we preserve the principles of the revolution and the memory and legacy of our founder flight lieutenant jj rawlings for posterity he said in a letter to me when we offered to have him named on the fpso for the eni sankofa field he said, I prefer to be remembered in the hearts of men than by monuments and statues. I dare say no one person can fill Jerry Rawlings' shoes. No one person can encapsulate the charisma, the political weight, and the courage exhibited by our late founder. And since no one person can fill those shoes, it means that it will take a collective responsibility. Some lives were lost in the course of this election. I'm talking about the 2020 general elections and the former president paid homage to the lost souls with a promise that regardless of how long it takes, he would ensure that families of the deceased are compensated. These were people who just sought to exercise what is guaranteed by, to them by the 1992 Constitution, to exercise their democratic rights and freedoms. Nobody should die exercising those fundamental rights. And it's a duty of any government to protect the lives of our citizens and ensure that no blood is shed as a result of people's right to choose their leaders. And so today we salute the memory of these people who died. And however long it takes, I assure and promise that justice will be done to them and appropriate compensations given the families. Former Member of Parliament and also former Minister of State in the Eswal NDC administration, Dan Abu Dakwi, expressed worry about what he described as the militarization of Ghana's democracy. Today, our democracy is being militarized. We are seeing things that at the launch of the revolution, at the beginning of the democratic process, we never thought that was going to happen, but those things are happening. But I believe, and I'm sure we all do believe, that if we organize people, if we organize property, and let the mass of our people begin to really see us as not only using them to take political power, but making sure that power really belongs to them, no obstacle will stand in the way of the forward march of this country. The national executives of the NDC are leaving the Osikam Park with the hope that the rank and file will stand solidly behind the party, even as they challenge the outcome of the 2020 presidential elections at the Supreme Court. From the Sikam Park here in Accra, this is Latifi Dries reporting for Joy News. And we're taking a break here on Joy News Prime. Bad in business, trade expert calls for more support for private sector businesses as Africa, the Africa Continental Free Trade kickstart on the 1st of January 2021. For the 
the private sector to be able to you know be ready it will depend on the, the policies and then the enabling the environment that has been put in place by government Hello, good evening. Welcome to the last business bulletin on Joy News for the year 2020. My name is Daryl Kwao. In a few hours, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is expected to take effect, but there are concerns as to whether Ghana is really ready for the trade pact. While well, the Africa Center for International Trade and Development is urging more support for private sector businesses for Ghana to reap the full benefits, earlier I spoke with the executive director of the center, Isaac Hubert Arthur. If Africa has also introduced this, I mean, not, notwithstanding the challenges, the bottlenecks that we anticipate, we need to kick it, start. We need to kick start it. We need to uh, roll it out, and then as they come, we will tackle them. We can never finish solving all our problems, but unless we start doing something, then we'll be able to see how best we are positioned to solve uh, them when they come. It is Ghana ready? And I'm asking this because uh, in the days leading up to the implementation of the trade deal, we've had uh, businesses, especially small businesses, say they don't have the muscle uh, to, to compete with foreigners, I mean foreign businesses, because they are not empowered enough. Okay, there are several ways of assessing Ghana's readiness. I mean... Of course, it comes in various forms and all of that. We need to look at the private sector. But you know, the two works hand in hand because for the private sector to be able to, you know, be ready, it will depend on the, the policies and then the enabling the environment that has been put in place by government. A teacher at Ejusso, Alex Esunina, has emerged winner of the last of four Toyota Corolla cars from Star 7A Star Hash Lotteries. This boosts to 52, the number of wins so far since the commencement of the jackpot, with an amount of 20,000 cities also backed by the latest winner. There's more in the following report. The car which was presented to him at the head office of Star 787 Hash in Accra also presented a check of 20,000 cities to Mate Banjekla as the 52nd unique prize winner. They both had this to say to Joy Business. I don't know whether to say I'm overjoyed or we're excited. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Actually, God has changed my destiny. Yeah. I knew God would have blessed me, but not in this way. He has blessed me, and I don't know what to say to express my appreciation to God. Last week, on Monday, I bought three tickets after receiving a message. Then Tuesday, I didn't win the 200. So I bought another tray on Wednesday, hoping that on Thursday, I'll get the 1,000 CDs. Thursday too, I didn't get. So Friday, I bought another one. Then lo and behold, on Saturday, I received a call around 8 p.m. that I had won a car. I'm in Accra, and now the car too has been handed over to me. It is not fake. It is genuine. These are my car keys, and these are the documents too. So this one is genuine, and it's not destiny. fake. It has changed my destiny, and anybody at all can also win. Johnson Labic Kumbil Damiset is my name. I'm a civil servant. I'm standing on behalf of my younger brother, Mathieu Banjaglar who is also a consultant. For one or two reasons, he's not been able to come and take the check. So he asked me, that was on Monday, he came to inform me that he has won a prize. So I should come and stand on his behalf and collect the check. I feel very, very happy for getting this check, even though it is something that I cannot say is too much for him, but it can also change his life in one way or the other. I will tell so many people, including even people from my village, that this is the only way they can get money faster, if only they can stick on this raffle. I mean, I mean myself, I'm going to 
invest on it. Richard Akutobanfo, head of customer experience, also had this to say. This new year, 20 players stand to win 2021 Ghana cities because the new year is 2021. You stand to win this with only three tickets, 15 Ghana cities. What are you waiting for? Dial star 787 hash to play now. And you could be one of those 20 people to take home 2021 Ghana cities this Friday. Take your chance now. Plus a whooping big jackpot of 861,500 Ghana cities on Saturday. Don't waste this moment. It's only five Ghana cities and only 15 Ghana cities. It could be your 10. Take your chance now. And that's it for business. See you in 2021. Hopefully there will be some more wins. Sports is up next week. Thanks for staying with us. It's now time to bring you sports. My name is Hans Mensa, and we begin with boxing and Duke. Aquete Michael Wall, remember in 2020 he failed in his, uh, in his uh, ambition to annex the world title against John Rio Casimero. The boxer believes that God has a plan for him heading into 2021. Uh, looking forward to bouncing back. You'd love to have an opportunity uh, against uh, Casimero again? Oh yeah, when I got opportunity, I would like to fight. Mm. But mentally, um, I would like I would like uh, backup from 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 Africa, Ghana. This way because I represent Ghana mm -hmm. in the in the world level. So I will expect the government, you know, to support us. Even if the government cannot do this, we have sponsorships. They can also put support so that the thing will be huge. So I will see that now my my country is now backing me. Mm. Because even when I, when I was about to fight, I don't even know that Ghanaians are watching the fight. After the fight, I was like, they said, hey, you, we watch you on telly. I was like, oh, then I don't know. It's like disgrace. That's why I don't want to let anybody know that I'm coming. I see. Because I'm disgraced. Like, the way I believe in myself, yeah. I believe in myself because I believe in God. I don't worship anything except God. So it's like, but I know that God wants me to learn. You can quote Michael there, and Majida Shimero is a Black Stars midfielder. He plays for Red Bull Salzburg. He's at a satisfactory 2020, also looking ahead to 2021, where he's vowed to make a mark at Red Bull Salzburg. You know, the, there's, um, there's this, uh, this mindset, uh, uh, this from, uh, from Africa, like, like from Ghana, because uh, all the all, all the players that moved to to Red Bull from Ghana had uh, had had difficulties, and for me when I was when I was going back, I spoke with with few of my my people, and they said, look, it's always difficult for the guys that are from Ghana to go to Red Bull to to break through. And so, as a player, when I was going, I was really focused. I wanted to put um, a bit respect on uh, on our name, and uh, I tried to fight each each day to to make sure that I will. I will, I will make the mark, and uh, I think uh, my, my my hard work has been uh, has been rewarded, and I think uh, it's 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 it, it was um, a good thing for we the we the Ghanaian players. Uh, for sports for the year 2020, entertainment is up next. My name is Hans Mensando. It's time for showbiz, and um, Noella is here without her mask. Hello, Noella. Hi, Israel. Yeah. So uh, today we are wrapping up yeah, so today all the, to you know, the topical you. stories. Today everybody uh, gets to see you. <laughs> so yeah, we are wrapping up all, you know, the topical stories of 2020. Right. So yeah, just watch. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, <laughs> quickly. Okay, one of my highlights for for uh, 2020. 2020 was. Mm. Um, some nuns calling me to pray for me. Apparently, mm. they're big fans of the show. Oh, I see. And so today I visited them. Bless them. And uh, yeah, I want to say God bless them. Yeah, you should bless me too. I mean, just touch my head. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, touch them more. Well, touch them more. All right. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, <laughs> thank Noella. Thank you for having me. And um, I want to say thank you to all of you. This is the last uh, bulletin for this year. See you on the other side, 2021. Happy New Year to you all.